David Adesonia here, your uncrowned 145 pound champion. Here with two time UFC middleweight champion, Israel Adesonia. Mm -hmm. How are you, champ? I'm gravy, baby. I'm gravy. We are four weeks away from your 11th consecutive UFC title fight. When you hear stats like that, what's your, your reaction to it? I don't change numbers. Numbers chase me. I said that a while ago, even before I got in the UFC. Um, yeah. Like, this is the part where I kind of, like, just pause on the ladder real quick. As I'm, oh, as I'm climbing, just like, huh. Come a long way. We're up. How many times do you go back and reflect? To be honest, a couple of times a year, if I want to go deep. Well, of course, you cast your mind back for, for certain things, but like, I sit down and really think about like what, what I've done a couple times a year, maybe two, three times a year, I just sit down. Normally on my birthday, that's one. Definitely, I just like, hmm, crazy. Let's talk about your first title fight real quick. You fought five times in 12 months before your bout with Kevin Gastelum. And then that fight was eight weeks after your fight with Anderson. Oh, really? Eight weeks after? Yeah, eight weeks after. So How again, important is weeks. it Damn. to snatch the title shot opportunity when it's presented to you, regardless of circumstance? It's really important. Like, example, even before the title shot, I was meant to do this Europe tour after, like, I had four fights. I had five fights in the UFC my first year. And um, after four fights, I was like, man, I need a break. I want to travel and do whatever. So I was in Ireland for a friend's wedding. I was meant to go to like Amsterdam, London, Paris, all that, do like a Europe tour, just to enjoy myself. Copped a few bonuses in the time, so I was rolling. And um, then the contract for Anderson came, because when it first got offered to me, I was like, nah, I don't want to. I was like, why? I didn't want to. But then like the contract for Anderson came and I was just like, history, destiny, you have to do it. So I put that on the wayside. As much as I was looking forward to that and needed that, put it by the wayside and I signed to fight Anderson because that was the opportunity right there. When I never planned on fighting him, he was my, you know, like he's my, he was my hero. When the opportunity came, it's like, bro, this is destiny. You have to fight him. So I did, I took the opportunity when it was right there because how often are you going to get that opportunity? And see now even it's immortalized on my wall in the beautiful masterpiece. I still fought like what, it was Anderson and then Gaslam eight weeks later. So. Yeah, it's important. You can't just pass up these opportunities because even as a fighter, you only have so much like time in this game. So why would you turn down opportunities when they're in front of you if they make sense? Like a title shot. Isn't that what you've wanted your whole time? Having five fights in 12 months, five training camps, you would have been banged up surely just from going through the trainings. How do you go about continuing accepting fights and going into training camps not being 100%? Some people just wait for the opportunity. Oh, like, you know, those people who's like, you know, when are you going to come to the gym? They're like, oh, when I get fit, oh, when I get, I want to get fit first before I come to the gym. It's like, what do you do at the gym? You come to the gym to get fit. But some people wait for the, the right opportunity, the right time. Not realizing they're just letting time fly by because time waits for no man. Has Dreykus missed his immediate shot? Could Hamza, you know, have a dominant performance over Costa and swoop in and be the next number one contender? Definitely, definitely. Um, but again, I do want to fight Drickus, but he has to know he's not calling the shots here. That's the thing. I am. So again, a guy who, oh, my foot is this, my foot's that. Yeah, look at me. My foot's a balloon. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Sean Strickland. Mm. The narrative out there is that this is going to be a walk in the park for you. How seriously are you taking this fight? I never underestimate anyone. I was even thinking about Bisping versus Rockhold. When Bisping finally beat, beat him. Took the fight on like 1.5 weeks notice or something. Two weeks notice. And goes in there and shocks the world. That's a possible reality. My job is to make sure it's not in this reality. That's in another parallel universe. In another timeline. So like... Yeah, I'm very aware of the dangers that he brings and the stuff that he's really good at. So I don't take this lightly. Like, you guys have seen me. You see how I've been working. I'm not underestimating this guy, but at the same time, I'm not overestimating him. And I want to make this look easy. I'm going to make this look easy. 
and the way I'm I'm working right now, I, I just I just know. You know what? Let's wrestle. <laughs> Let's see what happens. But like, yeah. What are the, some of the things that uh, you think he's good at, and threats that he brings to the table? Uh, he's got a nice guard. Uh, he's got a good jab. Also, just to be honest, just crazy. He's crazy. That's that's the X factor. But again, so am I. A man with nothing to lose and everything to gain is a dangerous man. You had sparring yesterday. And how did that session go? So, on Friday, pretty much got a train ran on me, like by everybody in the gym I was rolling with or working with. Some days you're like, you're just the hammer, some days you're the nail. And I got nailed. Like, it was, it was, it was yeah, it was bad. So, I just use that as an opportunity, like a learning opportunity. Okay, come tomorrow, show up, and you show out. Some people will go through what I went through on Friday and just like get their confidence rocked and just sit there and just. Sean likes to talk a lot inside and outside the octagon. Yeah. Everyone's excited about, about the press conference. Mm -hmm. What type of trash talk are you expecting during the presser? Just some loud mouth talking over and louder than you to try and seem like he's got something to say. He has nothing to say, really. He just wants to... Again, I, I know the guy. I've, I've seen him. I've pressed him before. <laughs> Actual. What happened before we walked on stage? Hey, hey, I hey. smacked you on the ass like my bitch. Bro. Uh, <laughs> so he's not like, it's for show. So I just know what it is. That's why most people are just expi excited about the press conference because that's the that's his spot to shine, I guess. But, I, you know, I can rap too. I just decide when I use my mouth and when I don't. What about inside the octagon? If he's talking to me, he's going to get his jaw broken. Or lie, he's going to get his jaw broken. Like, because when you're talking, you're not focused on the task at hand. And yeah, look at Costa. Come on, Easy. I don't got to say shit. My work will do the talking and he'll feel me. When I say feel me, they don't understand. He'll feel me. So um, yeah, I hope he talks to me because he'll get his jaw broken. Mm. This is your 11th consecutive title fight. You're used to facing super high level opponents, number one contenders, being the champion. Sean is ranked number five. I guess like a fighter in your position. I like, you know you, John Jones, etc. Sometimes they don't want to get out of bed for someone that is not of that type of level. So is the him trying to poke the bear, is that where the motivation from this fight is coming from? A good thing I never give a fuck about rankings. I don't give a fuck about rankings, I just know. If you're in our level, in the UFC, you're one of the best in the world. And these guys are all great. And anyone can beat anyone any given night. That's why you have to prepare accordingly. So for me, the, the motivation, to be honest, is just taking his head. This is another guy to style against. And being in Sydney, six of us on the card, half the card is CKB. So I have to close the show in a spectacular way. And I will. Bro, even if it's five rounds of just dominance and styling on him, display of martial arts, I'd be happy with that. But I just don't see that happening. I'm going to knock him out. I just, I just, one plus one is two. I'm going to knock him out. Touching on that again, there are six of you CKB fighters on the card. And there are also a lot of fighters that are fighting around the date yeah. of UFC 293. Mm -hmm. What's the atmosphere in the gym been like the last few weeks? Bro, everyone will just be feeding off everyone. And the atmosphere is like a big moment, like a storm's coming. So we're all gearing ready for the storm. And this is like a big weekend for everyone to shine. Well, we've done it before. And I think we can do it again. Definitely, we can do it again on all fronts in the UFC and outside of the UFC. It's one of the M ones. It's palpable. You can feel it in the gym, and everyone's just up their game. Yeah. All right. When you visualize the fight and you and Sean in the octagon, what do you see? Mm, being free. That's what I see. Being free. Being free to express. On a beautiful canvas. Yeah, being free to express on a beautiful canvas. I just go in there and do my thing, touch them up. 
touch him up till <laughs> <laughs> All right. I appreciate your time, Jim. Mm -hmm.